Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Carlo Brescia. I'm from Peru and I'm going to make this presentation about uh, a glam photographic journey into the world of sacred plants from the Peruvian Amazon region. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I should do it. How can I? The next slide is. Do you see the, no, you don't see the next, okay. So this, uh, this is the structure of the, um, this presentation. I will um, may discuss, present some background of, of what is um, indigenous knowledge, epistemic decolonization, and this GLAM project we, we began last year. So the next slide is uh, in, in the picture you see a shakapa, which is a, a written instrument. So there, there are many definitions of indigenous knowledge. Uh, the one I am presenting here right now is one from UNESCO. Uh, there are many, many ways to define indigenous knowledge, but it's is a, a way of of a understanding the world knowledge uh, it is important also uh, to define who defines what is indigenous knowledge uh, it is done from an an inside perspective or from an outside perspective this is very important uh, when we, we we are in this colonialism and decolonization. we understand by knowledge. Uh, now I'm presenting the, what we usually understand by colonization, the action or process of settling among and establishing control over the indigenous people of an area, usually to get the resources and uh, use the, the population for the benefit of the colonizer. In the image, all the images are, I am presenting are in Wikimedia Commons. Uh, and you see that that is a book published in 1552. That is a short account of the destruction of the Indias. And this refers to, to the Americas. It, it was written by Bartolomé Las Casas, a Spanish priest that denounced the, the violence being a dance done against the indigenous people of Peru and, and beyond. Um, the, next the next slide is another definition of what is colonialism. This is, this is a recent article from 2019 uh, in a, that was published in a, in a, 
in National Geographic, in the National Geographic webpage. The history of colonialism is one of brutal subjugation of indigenous people. Indeed, indeed, it's brutal. And, and although there are, there are some positive effects of cultural exchange, there are products that come and products that go, also, uh, it's violence, violence, structural violence, physical violence, economic symbolic, psychological, sex, sexual, and epistemic. Epistemic violence has to do with uh, the way the way we, we, we had a, a way of understanding. We were suddenly second class citizens and the, the people that were the colonizers were the first class citizens. And here uh, trying to, to broaden our, our understanding about epistemic violence uh, there are some concepts uh, that come from some European writers like Gramsci, cultural hegemony, the clips of reason. It has to do with reasoning, making an argument in order to, to make colonization uh, appearing like, like correct, like, like uh, just justifying this violence against the people. This has happened in the Americas and has happened in Africa and in Asia. And also uh, there is a, an internal colonialism. Some countries do colonialism inside their territories. Uh, that has happened in France, in the US, in Peru, and, and in many countries. One vision from an elite is imposed to the other uh, societies inside one country. It's a shocking experience, and you have a book by Franz Fanon from Martinica, from the Caribbean, that discusses this a lot, the, the impacts of colonization, and also has to do with the loss of memory. And um, this is very critical because a lot of knowledge developed by, developed by civilizations, indigenous civilizations, suddenly was erased, persecuted, and for example, there is a um, Francisco de Avila, I'm, I'm citing Francisco de Avila, quoting him. He wrote, didn't I myself remove more than 30,000 30, idols by my hands for 30 years from the towns of the Corregimiento, Huarachiri, Yaoyos, Hausa, and Chaupi, Guaranicas, and other towns, and did I burn more than 3,000 bodies of the deceased whom they adored? Uh, this Francisco Davila was one of many extirpadores de, lo, de Lotrias. These were people that were in charge of uh, destroying, persecuting religious items, persecuting people that uh, accumulated knowledge. In, in Quechua, a person that accumulates not, that knows a lot, that has a lot of wisdom, that gathers the knowledge of a society is called a yachak, an amautatu. And they, these extirpadores were persecuting and uh, disappearing these uh, wise people. And in the Andes, like in other regions, most, most cultures have ancestor cults that honor memory, that honor the wisdom of the, of the people that were before the, the lineage honor their territory and, and nature. In this image, you see a huanca, which is a monolith, uh, present in a temple. In, in, in. This still remains, this exists, this survived the, the conquest and the colonization, because it was not discovered. Uh, it's so, so old that when the, the Spanish arrived, it had like 2,500 years old. So. 
they missed it and luckily it is still uh, is with us so uh, all all many other things were destroyed and this has an impact is a loss of memory and this loss of memory loss of connection with nature your territory of lineage has uh, develops a collective amnesia, amnesia of what was before you where do you come from uh, where who, who are you you lose identity and and many people uh, are uprooted in a very violent way uh, compared to, to migrants for example migrants go from the americas to europe or from europe to the americas and they, they, they are kind of uprooted, but um, in, in, in colonization, this is very, very violent. And people don't remember. People don't have the, the ways to remember and have an impact till, till the present day. Uh, now I will quote something that said a president of Europe he said in 2007, Africa's drama is that the African has not entered into history. How, how can a president say this? How come Africa has not entered history? So this I, I quote this because uh, it's an example of the amnesia that people ha have, not only the colonized people, but also the colonizer. There's a collective amnesia. Uh, some years ago, we were working in, in Belgium about uh, the memory of Africa in, in Europe. And, and this memory of what happened in Africa was not told in, in, in the school, at the schools in, at that time in, in Belgium. Uh, so there are like policies, educational policies that decide what story to tell, what, uh, what uh, events are are being told and on which are not. So uh, this is very very um, hard because uh, when you don't remember what you did, when you don't, you have this collective amnesia. You usually repeat w what you did. Yes history repeats itself if we don't remember. So say, saying this, uh, I will start the second part of this uh, presentation, which is the GLAM project that has to do with this, decolonizing. Uh, we did a GLAM project in, in a region in the Amazon, in the Northern Amazon of Peru. It's called the Takiwasi Center. It's a established center. success of 54 percent that's really really uh, uh, big compared to other therapies that try to reduce addiction to cocaine or heroin or other other plants other substances this uh, takiwasi center has received a lot of researchers and many articles are have been published about this center has a lab and a botanical garden and luckily, they have a, a, a photographic re record. So, because uh, we knew them, we had certain relationships, we decided, okay, let's do a, a GLAM project. Let's liberate your images with a, with a license, a Creative Commons license in Wikimedia Commons. And this was done with Wikaxon Peru, which is the project uh, I am a member, I'm, I'm a part of, and the process was to develop an alliance, make some accords, do some training. In the, in the picture you see a workshop we had about how to uh, upload images. Then we have to do the revision and then use these images in the Wikipedias. Uh, the process started in September 2021 and then that the upload in 2000 in December 2021 so it was like three months 
So uh, all these images are from this uh, uh, GLAM project, the first one in Peru. Uh, and I will introduce some concepts of traditional medicine, Amazonian traditional medicine, with these pictures. In, in, in Andean and Amazonian uh, traditional medicines, there are plants that are sacred, visionary teachers, uh, but some are very extensive, like tobacco. Tobacco is, is used not only as a medicine, but also as a ritual plant. You, it's, it's, it's like a microphone. <laughs> you can use tobacco to blow it and to make a prayer because the spirit of the tobacco is a strong one. So that's uh, a sacred plant like coca, like ayahuasca, like wilca. These plants are very important for, for uh, many indigenous cultures. Uh, also, also coca. Coca is there is a variety. Of so teacher plants uh, are plants that teach knowledge to curanderos through visions, through visions and, and dreams. I will I will know how this this uh, knowledge is transferred um, apart from visions and dreams. And these knowledges are related to the plant's properties, preparation, and application. So in, in, in the process where a curandero or curandera has an in initiation that has a lot of years, like 20 years or 10 years, depending on, on, on the, the path that this, this person takes. Uh, so through this initiation, he uh, participates in what we call an Amazonian diet. An Amazonian diet is a moment where a, a to-be curandero or curandera isolates in nature for one year or some months and diets a specific plant. He is isolated in a small cabin and only has like um, a plant we call uh, yuca or mandioca in, in Portuguese, uh, no salt, no sugar, uh, body, uh, herbal baths, has ayahuasca ceremonies, um, an intake of these teacher plants, like uh, so in the other uh, slide. So in this process of two months, three months, the curandero uh, starts dreaming and having visions and talking to the spirit or receiving uh, information from the spirit of the plant through the dreams and the visions he has. In, in in this picture, you see a tambo. A tambo is, is this type of, uh, is where, where these curanderos uh, isolate themselves. Uh, the food is prepared by someone else, usually the teacher of the curandero. But the idea is to have a moment in isolation so the person can connect to the plant and to himself and clean his mind, his body, his uh, emotions and connect to the spiritual world. So uh, this is part of one of the, of, of the traditions. Uh, sometimes the, the tambo is not so well constructed as the one you see. This is the one that Takiwasi Center uses. Magical songs, these are also part, very important part of traditional medicine in the Amazon not only in the Amazon, but in the Orinoco region too. Uh, for example, uh, in, in Tarapoto, they call them Icaros, but the Shipibo call them Besho, the Awajun call them Anent, the Kokama call them Mariri, uh, the Huachipaeri call them Echuba. These magical songs have energetic sound and semantic dimensions. 
and through these songs the spirits the spirits are invoked and their help and their intervention is requested during the therapies that these curanderos and curanderas have um, i don't want to use the the word shaman <laughs> because it's a um, continent in 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 the amazon they have their names like paje paje or um, Sheripiari and many others, uh, Onania, uh, but they, they have a similar function. They mediate between the, this world and the spiritual world. And in the picture you see Don Solontello um, chanting an Icaro with his shakapa to a small... Uh, the shakapa is this uh, instrument made of leaves. Uh, and, and these songs are received in dreams and in visions by the curandero. Each curandero has the, have their own song. Uh, another type of, of these magical songs are the shuba of the Huachipaeri people. And, and these are, uh, in, are in, on the list of UNESCO, of the Intangible Cultural Heritage. And there, there are only 12 people that no, uh, know the songs, know how to, 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 to sing them, so they are in danger. And, and most of these traditions, most of these uh, knowledges and, and practices, technologies of consciousness are endangered because with, with modernization in the Amazon, with the roads, with the forestation, uh, we lose a lot. In this picture, you see a modern ayahuasca ceremony in Takiwasi, where people gather around the curandero. There are many traditions, and inside each tradition the, the, of the Shipibo, for example, a lineage of Shipibos have a different ceremonial structure than their neighbors. <laughs> yes. Uh, ayahuasca now nowadays uh, in Latin America and in Europe and in North America is very popular. Many people come to Peru, and there are many gringo shamans. And they call themselves. They are called that way. That they learn how to. Some are 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 uh, doing the right thing, but many other. Uh, they, they are not following traditions and people are, are dying. People have died in Cusco, in, in Puerto Maldonado, in Iquitos, because um, sometimes when, when these powerful plants uh, are not conducted in the right way, people can die. Uh, so it's important to follow a tradition. We have another picture where this maestro Don Solon Tello serves ayahuasca to another person. So in this GLAM project, a plan, we have 1,200 images liberated by Takiwasi. We have rituals, we have plants, we have preparation of plants, and we have also curanderos of their archives. Uh, curanderos like Juan Flores, that if you Google in, in, in academic Google, Google Scholar, he, he cited uh, there are many articles in, in, by National Geographic talking about Juan Flores or Norma Panduro. Uh, so now we have pictures, um, but not only we have many pictures from from curanderos, but also from people that. Uh, our researchers like Jeremy Narvi from Canada, and, and this picture of Jeremy, Car Car Jeremy Nar Narvi, who wrote The Cosmic Serpent, is being used in at least four Wikipedias, not in, in the Spanish Wikipedia yet. Santiago Manuin Valera is a, is a, a environmental defender and indigenous leader. He died in 2020, and this picture is being used in the in the Wikipedia article, it was very important. And uh, we have also pictures from people that are not from Peru. 
that also went to Takiwasi, like Dr. Yahaya Segaya from Uganda and Francisco Sabino from Ecuador that went to Takiwasi. So Francisco Sabino is also a very uh, distinguished uh, curandero in Ecuador, and, and he, when, when his article is going to be created, we have this picture. Um, all Francisco Sabino is, is from, from another tradition, as well as, the, the, as this doctor from Uganda. Uh, we also have pictures of, of plant preparations. Uh, this is an extract of Rosa Sisa, uh, which is used in, in purges, when, when sometimes they mix tobacco with, with Rosa Sisa, and you drink it, and you purge, you bob it. So it's very important to the to make this depuration of, 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 of plants in Amazonian traditions. Also in, in, in Western traditions, if you see words like break fast, means that there is a fasting, fast, a fast that depurates the body, like, like in Spanish, desayuno, no? you break el ayuno. Also we have pictures of plant remedies preparations, uh, Herbal baths are very, uh, are widely used in, in, a, in medicinal, in traditional medicine, uh, and also, um, I'm going to present another image of activation of the plants. Plants, when when they are sung and blown, they, it's very important this process because the 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 curandero sings and talks and prays to the spirit of the plant to activate it and call call it to to, to make a, a healing. Um, so uh, I'm going to. I have a couple of slides more, but 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 I'm going to the the last one of the pictures, which has to do with the soplada. The soplada is blowing to tobacco also very important for cleaning, it cleans energetic uh, body around the patients. And um, at the end, I, I ask a question about what can we do to decolonize, recover, and root connect uh, our memories? How, how can we do it from Wikimedia activities? And I think that these type of projects contribute to them. These type of projects bring these practices uh, that are being researched nowadays. Uh, to, to visibilize them, uh, uh, articles of memory and uh, people in the, for memory. This is very important, right? We, we colonization brings loss of memory, brings collective amnesia, both to the colonizer and the colonized. He, here are two more two quotes by Italo Calvino: "More enlightened our houses are, the more their walls whose ghost. The more you clarify your your understanding, you see what is behind a train station in Europe." what has happened in order to, to have this, this development. Um, and also one from Charles Memory Green. To know where, where are you and where do you come from. So that's it. Um, thank you. I don't know, know if, if someone has questions. Maybe it's too late. Thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed.
enjoyed this presentation. And if you have questions, please, uh, uh, we are at Wikiacción Peru, and you can write us uh, about what you are doing and, and what you learned from this presentation. Thanks.